Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here. It is great to be with you. I spent yesterday with my two oldest kids at Cedar Point riding roller coasters. It was a lot of fun. I'm ready to dive back into the Union Campaign, Ultimate General Civil War. I want to give a shout out and a big thank you to Ashley Hyatt. Thank you, Ashley, for becoming my latest supporter on this channel through Patreon. I really appreciate that. And uh, I've enjoyed some of your comments as well as the discussions we've been able to have. And I uh, love your insight, love your observations, and your love of history. So I'm so glad you're a part of this channel. Moving forward, please keep those comments coming. Others of you, if you are interested in such things, you can click on the link below for Patreon to see more information about how to get involved. Ashley, I'm going to uh, touch base with you. Let me know if you've got a name in mind for a brigade in this campaign, uh, because you get to pick one. And uh, I don't care what it is, as long as it's family friendly, you can name them anything at all that you want. But we're going to dive into the second battle of Bull Run. Now, you will notice uh, I've got my first core, my second core here. Uh, I have 18,000 men in my force pool and a lot of money. And you might be wondering, why are you not using your max amount? Well, there's a reason for that. This is a really easy battle to win. And I don't plan on engaging most of my forces. And so the, the fewer uh, number of troops that I put into my army, the fewer he's going to have on his side because of the scaling. And uh, so I've loaded up this first corps with all infantry brigades except for three cavalry brigades right here. Uh, and that's all I'm going to need to win this battle. So uh, the first part of the battle is Groveton, and nothing really happens there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put these guys in the vanguard, put the rest right here. Uh, you'll see I have 58,000 men. He's only got 6,800, but that's just because it's the Battle of Groveton, which is the first part of the battle. And I am not even going to engage in this part of the battle. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold my troops back. Uh, I may take a few shots from his artillery before I can get him out of harm's way. But I'm going to keep everybody right here in this corner. And I'm going to let the clock tick out on this because it has nothing to do with the battle. Um, it's just one of those little things that you can fight. But it's meaningless. So I'm going to drop out right here. I'll come back with the main part of the battle and talk through my strategy for a quick victory. All right, we're on to phase two. This is the main battle of Bull, uh, second battle of Bull Run itself. And this is probably, on the Union side, the easiest battle to win. It's really not very difficult at all. Uh, it's really just a matter of loading up on the left side. That's not going to work like that. It's a matter of loading up on the left side and then just kind of using the uh, kind of the sledgehammer movement uh, that some of us have talked about on the comment sections. It's just a matter of all you need to do is in these two, two and a half hours of mission time, take this objective right here and have it not be contested anymore and the battle's over. Uh, so in order to do that, I'm basically just going to bring my whole army over to the extreme left side. And then I'm just going to start pushing them forward. It's going to take a little while to do that, of course, to get everybody in a position. I'm going to give the cavalry separate orders so they can get there first. Because you'll notice that if you kind of select the whole force at once, the cavalry will just stay with the rest of them, but if you give them individual orders, they'll move faster and get there on their own. And I think skirmishers are probably the same way. I'm going to bring some of these guys around. I want to keep them out of the field of fire of the Confederates that I know are kind of perched right along in here. So it's likely that by the time I take the objective, uh, it'll be too short a time left to where the, the mission time will run out and it'll still be contested. And that's okay as long as the Confederates don't get it back for even a second. Because if they do, then it's just going to trigger the next part of the battle. But as long as I can get that contested timer to run down while I still hold the objective, then the battle's over. And uh, this should be a relatively bloodless battle. Now, the drawback to that, of course, is that I'm not going to inflict, inflict large numbers of casualties on the Confederate Army, which means they're going to be larger going into Antietam. But this is one of those battles where 
anything I do to inflict large numbers of casualties on him is probably going to result in some pretty significant casualties on my side as well. So I'm actually okay with keeping it low on both sides because I don't think he's going to take his full force into Antietam regardless of what he has available to him. But we'll see how that all plays out once this battle's over. Okay, so everybody's just about into position. Let me get O'Hare's unit over here. And I'm just going to just use that sledgehammer move. I'm just going to stack up brigades and start them marching through this line. The first one's obviously going to take the greatest casualties. So I'm going to start with some of my unskilled units like Keys right here who's got farmer muskets and is a basically a zero star unit. That's who I'm going to lead with. Because they're the cheapest to replace. And then I'll follow them up. With the others. And then I'll bring my cavalry around up here. I gotta get a little tricky over here because um, if I march up on this side, I'm, I'm liable to get flanking fire from this side. So I've got to have at least a couple of brigades that cover that flank. Yep, see right there, there's a flank issue, so i got to get Wraith over here, cover this flank. Problem is, cavalry doesn't operate real good in the, uh, in the woods, so I want to try and draw some of these units out into the open before I hit them with my cavalry. Make sure these guys don't keep running here. These guys I need to run. Alright, I'll send the Irish Brigade over here to cover the flank against Tremble. The rest of these guys, let's move them up. All right, so the good news here now is you're going to see Lawton's going to route out into the open. And this is where I'll hit him with my cavalry. All right, let's start turning toward the objective here. We got 42 minutes left. I gotta have at least a couple brigades cover the flank over here, but the rest we're gonna start shifting over.
All right, Lawton surrendered. I kind of expected that was going to happen. Just need to have the objective before that mission time runs out, and then we just got to wait out the the uh, eh, what do you call it? Contested timer. All right, let's keep Lawton close where he doesn't get turned. Go grab those supplies. Sorry, Stonewall, not your day, buddy. Brant is trying to go rescue the supplies. I've got 14 minutes, so I've got to hurry up and overrun this objective, which is about to happen. There we go. Now we just gotta wait out the 42 minutes. Okay, sweet. Captured another unit. Just gotta get him going the other direction here. No, not you guys. Ah. Capture Stonewall Jackson. That'd be kinda cool. I mean, obviously, I don't think that can happen in this game, but it'd be pretty great if you could. All right, so once this mission timer runs out in the next four minutes, I cannot allow the Confederates to take this for even one second, because if they do, it ends the contested. It triggers the next part of the battle. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and let Field get away. I don't want to get dragged any further into his battle lines with my cavalry. We're just going to sit here and hold this for the next half hour. Build a nice little defensive line around it so he can't get anywhere near the objective. And we should be in good shape. Okay, and I just got to keep one eye over here on these guys. I don't want them getting up near the units that I captured. But I think we're good. Just go ahead and inflict a few more casualties, hold the objective, battle's over. Ah, turn around, Wraith.
All right, last few minutes here. Go ahead and inflict a few more casualties on early. And that's it. I mean, that's the second battle of Bull Run. It is, I think, the easiest major battle on the Union side. And you can see uh, 2,700 casualties for me, almost 5,000 for him. Of course, I also captured 1,400 men. Uh, and obviously, I had a huge advantage in manpower. And that's what you have to do in the first battle of Bull Run is take advantage of the big discrepancy that you have in manpower on the first day. So didn't grab a lot, but again, I'm not going to get my guns and my units by uh, capturing things from the other side. So looking ahead now, of course, you see he gets another 42,000 troops, which pushes his army size up pretty high, which might scare me a little bit, except for this fact. If you look at Antietam, even though he's got uh, over 100,000 men in his force pool now, He's not going to be taking that many in. Right now he's sitting at 40,608. Now obviously as I scale my army up, his is going to go up in size as well. Uh, but right now, even now, I've got a 55,000 man advantage. And so that number should stay favorable on my side moving forward. So we'll see. Uh, in the meantime, I've got two career points to spend. I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish up with politics all the way to 10. Actually, you know what? I'm thinking for right now anyway, I'm going to go training just to bring down the cost of veteran troops, and then I'll go back to revisiting some of the other things later. So, uh, In the meantime, I've got $467,000 in money. Uh, I've got some reputation points I could possibly spend on getting some additional units, like maybe some... 10 pounders for artillery. And I have currently, what what did I say, 55,000 men in my army. I've got another 37,000 available to me. I could get this force up near 100,000 by the time Antietam comes around. Uh, in the meantime, I've got Crampton's Gap and South Mountain. Either of which, when I win one, I'm going to get a bonus to the other one. So I'll have to decide which one I want to do first since they're both fought at the same time. Let's go ahead and just take a real quick look at what we'll be facing there. So, oh yeah, I remember this one. South Mountain, uh, that one basically in order to win it's kind of advantageous to march around his flank up here. So I should have an advantage in numbers there. He's going to have 27,000 men. I should be able to take between forty and 50,000 into that one. And then let's look at Crampton's Gap. Only nine brigades for this one, but he's only got 10,000 men as of now. So I'll certainly be able to take more than that. Even if I just take all infantry, I'm going to have over 20,000. So some decisions to make about those things. I'm really going to focus on veteran troops rather than a lot of troops because I... It just got so costly to try and equip all these guys with decent weapons. Uh, it just makes more sense for me to uh, use my money on veteran troops so I don't have to spend money on troops and weapons. So that's what I'm going to do for the time being. And I'll get that all refit and ready to go. Probably come back with Crampton's Gap next. Uh, as always, I welcome your input, your observations. I uh, am going to be revisiting my... Uh, modern day mod Hearts of Iron 4 series with the Nation of Israel. It seems like that stabilizes enough now for me to continue that, and that's probably been my next most popular series to this one, to this game. So I'm going to go back and revisit that probably here and there uh, as I continue this series. But as always, I welcome your observations, your thoughts, your questions, your comments. Put them in the comment section below. Hit that thumbs up. I greatly appreciate that. Thank you so much for all of you who have supported me, supported this page, who have subscribed who have become patrons. I appreciate all of that. This is my last week at home before I hit the road for Rachel's Challenge. So uh, by and large, I'm not going to have as much time to do videos because I'm working on a desktop that I can't really take with me on flights. Uh, so you'll see a lot more of my on-location videos uh, from historic sites, but probably not nearly as many videos uh, of me playing games, unless they're games that are don't require a lot of computing power. So... 
Uh, some things I'll be able to play, some I won't. But thanks for sticking with me, and we will see you again next time.